A lot of people want to be programmers. A lot of people want to learn how to code. And most of them end up actually learning how to code. But is that enough to become a successful programmer? Hello, Kareem here from afternerd.com. And in this video, I will try to answer this question. How to become a successful programmer? There are three main components to have a successful programming career. The first component is the technical component. And then what I call craftsmanship. And then the third component is leadership. I'll try to talk about each of them. The technical component is the component that you're mostly familiar with. It's about learning the technical aspects of programming and computer science in general. These are the topics that you would learn if you go to college to a computer science degree, computer engineering degree, or any related field. These are the topics that you will be learning. Mostly you'll be learning one or two programming languages, and more importantly, the fundamental concepts behind these programming languages and behind programming in general. And in addition to that, you will learn some really fundamental computer science concepts that are extremely important for any solid programmer who wants to be successful as a programmer and to have a successful career. For example, operating systems, networking, computer architecture, distributed systems and databases, all of these are topics that are important for you to have a successful career as a programmer, as a software engineer. The technical component alone is not going to be enough. It's important, but it's not going to be enough for you to have a successful programming career. And that's when craftsmanship and leadership comes into the picture. So what is craftsmanship? I think of it as the artistic part of programming, the part of programming that really just comes with experience. When you're working for a company for some years, this is the part that you start to learn. It's not something that you typically learn at school or in college. You don't learn this thing because usually these focus more on the technical aspect of things. But there's another aspect that really comes with experience. And you might ask why there is a difference between the technical aspects and craftsmanship or why can't we just learn the craftsmanship aspect at school? Well, first of all, we need to learn what this craftsmanship include, and I'll talk about this soon. But before, I want to talk about some significant differences between when you are learning the technical components, whether in college or on your own or by reading a book or watching a video, and actually working in industry, working, having a job as a software engineer. So here are some of the differences. Number one, when you're learning the technical aspects of programming, most of the time you're learning this on your own. So for example, you grab a book or whatever medium you're learning from. If you have a laptop, you have an IDE for a specific programming language and you just start coding and looking at the results and this is how you learn. And this is great. So this is the technical aspects of learning how to write programs, but then when you are a software engineer in a company, you're not working alone anymore. You're working with a team. And this requires different skills that are very different from the skills that you needed to learn programming. And we're gonna talk about what these skills are or some of the skills that are required when you're working with a team. It's, it's a very different method of writing the code and publishing your code and reviewing other people's code. It's a very different environment that requires different skills. And these skills you will only learn at the job through experience. It's not something that you will learn by reading a book about Python or Java or C++. Number two, when you're learning the technical aspects of programming, usually the end goal is to produce code that is functional. By functional, I mean code that does what you want the code to do. I'm pretty sure you and I remember the first time we wrote code that actually compiled without errors and printed something on the screen. There was a lot of joy. But when you become software engineer, writing functional code is a starting point. It's not the end goal anymore. It's expected of you to write code that does what you promise the code will do. The end goals become different things. For example, things like the reliability of the system, scalability, maintainability, all of these things become end goals depending on what you're building. And these other skills, these other end goals are also things that you will learn at the job. You will learn with experience. So for example, how to build reliable systems, how to write code that is maintainable and high quality and readable. So all of these things are things that you will learn at the job as you gain more experience. If you want to learn more about the craftsmanship component of programming, then I highly recommend a book called Clean Code by Martin Robert. The book is very popular and you probably have already read it. The book focuses, the beauty of this book is that it really just focuses on 
the craftsmanship aspect of programming rather than the technical aspect. The book doesn't teach you any specific programming language because it just focuses on programming as a craft. But be cautious though. I tried to read this book before my first internship. And after I read this book, it didn't really make much sense to me because you have to understand I was at a different environment at the time was a different mindset. I was mainly focusing on learning the technical aspects of programming and computer science. So the topics that are covered in clean code are topics that are more focused on things that you will face when you're working in a company, when you're working with other people. And that's why it didn't make sense to me. So if you're reading this book before your first internship or before your first full-time job, the book might not make much sense to you because the topics it will be hard to relate to. But once you get your first internship or your first full-time job, after you start working for a year or two, if you read this book, every topic will make so much sense to you and you'll be able to just relate to every little thing that the author is talking about. The book starts with the premise that good code actually matters. And in the rest of the book, the author will explain what good code is and how it looks like. But just the premise that good code actually matters was important, especially at the time. The author starts by giving an example of a company in the late 80s that was very successful and they were making a lot of money. But all of a sudden, the release cycle started to stretch. The bugs were not being fixed from one release to the other and crashes started to appear more and more often. And the company went out of business shortly after that. Many years later, the author meets with one of the early employees of the company and he asks him, what went wrong? Why did the company go out of business? And then the employee said, they rushed the product to market. When the state of the code, when the code was in a state of complete mess, they kept requiring more features to be added and then the product was rushed to the market again. The code got worse and worse and worse and eventually the company went out of business. Why did the company go out of business? It was not because of competition. It was not because they didn't get funding. It was not because of lack of features, but it was because bad code. So bad code can take your business out of business. The rest of the book, the author talks about what good code actually is, how it looks like in great depth. Of course, I'll not be able to talk about all of the different things in the book in just one video. Maybe I'll make a summary of the book at a later time. But yeah, I highly recommend this book if you don't have it already. The third aspect of becoming a successful programmer is leadership skills. Leadership skills are exceptionally important if you literally want to take your career to the next level. And I want to be clear here, when I talk about leadership skills, I'm not specifically talking about the employees who are at a super high level. You can exhibit leadership skills even if you are a junior level programmer, an entry level programmer even. And these skills, if you really have these skills in you, because part of it is personality, part of it can be taught and comes with experience as well. If you do have these skills or if you work on improving them, this is really gonna take you to the next level and it will definitely make you a more successful programmer. So here are three tips about improving your leadership skills. The first tip is to work on your communication skills, whether it's in a written format, verbal format, presentations, public speaking to your peers, management, leadership. If you really improve your communication skills, it's going to be the best thing that you can do to yourself to fast track your career growth. The technical component and craftsmanship will make you an awesome programmer. But if you can't communicate these ideas to other people, then your circle of influence will be restricted. The second tip, if you want to improve your leadership skills, is to take initiative. What that means is basically, if you see a problem and you have the capacity and the knowledge to fix the problem, go ahead and fix it. People will appreciate that. Be the solution to the problem. In the very popular book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey, he says the following. The difference between people who exercise initiative and those who don't is literally the difference between night and day. I'm not talking about 25 to 50% difference in effectiveness. I'm talking about a 5,000 plus percent difference, particularly if they're smart, aware, and sensitive to others. So 5,000 plus percentage-wise difference between someone who is taking initiative and someone who's not. So if you want to take advantage of this, make sure you take initiative 
and fix the problems that you come across. And then the third tip that I have for you to work and improve your leadership skills is to mentor other engineers who are more junior than you are. In her book, The Manager's Guide by Camille Fournier, she says that mentorship is the first stage of leadership. So if you want to work on your leadership skills and you don't know where to start, mentoring other people can be a very good way to start working on your leadership skills. Not only will you be helping other people out, maybe new members to the team or people who are completely new to the company, but also you'll be working on your leadership skills as well. So it's a win-win situation. So also take advantage of that if you have the opportunity. And yeah, that's the end of this video and uh, I'll see you in the next video.